Are you a doctor hoping to move to Canada and get licensed to work here? Are you a Canadian student studying medicine abroad and want to return to Canada for residency? If this sounds like you or someone you know, well this video may be for you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've been doing well and keeping healthy. In case this is your first time watching me, my name is Siva. I work as an anesthesiologist here in Toronto, Canada. I graduated from the medical school at the University of Sydney in Australia and then I eventually completed my residency training in anesthesiology at the University of Ottawa. Now, my YouTube channel is quite new, but already I've started receiving some messages coming my way about how I, w how I went about matching back into a Canadian residency program after studying medicine overseas. Now today I thought I'd share some of the strategies I used to match into a competitive residency spot in Canada as an IMG. Now before I go on, I want to clarify a few terms that I'll be using through this video. I'll refer to the International Medical Graduate as an IMG. IMGs can be overseas doctors coming to Canada for the first time or Canadians who've had or, or Canadians who've gone overseas for a short period of time just to study medicine. Secondly, I'll refer to the Canadian Residency Application System as CARMS. CARMS stands for Canadian Resident Matching Service. This organization essentially provides a single portal for candidates to apply for various residency programs across Canada. If you feel like skipping around to specific sections of this video, you can use the timestamps I've provided to make it easier to find what you're looking for. So let's get into it. First, I want to talk briefly about getting licensed to work as a doctor in Canada. So unlike many other countries such as Australia or the UK where you can finish medical school and work as a junior doctor for life with a general medical license, in Canada you need to be either a family doctor or a specialist to practice medicine independently for life. Furthermore, if you intend to practice as a family doctor, you'll need to be certified by the College of Family Physicians of Canada. The designation is labeled CCFP, which stands for Certification in the College of Family Physicians. If you want to practice as a specialist, you will need to be certified by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. Medical specialists have the designation FRCPC and surgical specialists have the designation FRCSC. These colleges essentially are governing bodies that ensure doctors work at a predefined level of competency. They assess this competency by examining doctors in their chosen specialties through written and oral examinations that are conducted each year. Once you pass these exams, they give you their seal of approval indicating that you've met the minimum level of competency to practice safely in your chosen specialty in Canada. Now, in order to be eligible to write these exams, you have two options. The first is to enter a Canadian residency program and complete between two to six years of training or residency and then sit the Canadian college exams. The second option, which is a little bit harder, is if you're coming from certain countries like the UK, Australia, South Africa, or Hong Kong, and already have a family medicine or specialist certificate from your home country, you may be eligible to have your training assessed and write the Canadian exams without having to retrain in Canada. What I'm going to focus on today is some of the strategies I use to help me land a very competitive Canadian residency program as an IMG and train as an anesthesiologist in Canada. I want to first show you some numbers that compares the number of training spots available uh, in Canada for Canadian medical school graduates versus overseas medical school graduates. For family medicine, there were 855 spots available in 2020 to graduates of Canadian medical schools while there were only 166 spots available to graduates of foreign medical schools. Now this is regardless of what citizenship you hold. Now if you look at my specialty, anesthesiology, there was 92 spots available to graduates of Canadian medical schools, while only eight spots available to graduates of foreign schools. In 2020, 1,435 overseas graduates took part in the CARMS match. And of these that took part, 29% of the candidates matched into a Canadian residency program. 
Now, all this is to, to show you that matching to Canadian residency spot is extremely competitive as an IMG. If you're serious about matching in Canada, you have to have a game plan and get yourself prepared early. That brings me to my first point. Start planning and preparing early. This is probably the most important thing I can tell you. You want to make sure you have a roadmap of where you want to end up and how you plan on getting there. Now on this roadmap of your medical school journey, you want to ensure that you have important milestones noted out so you can prepare for them early and get them out of the way. Now, as many of you know, becoming a doctor is not easy. It's a marathon and not a sprint. There are certain milestones you want to complete at specific points in your journey throughout medical school. Now, by planning ahead, you'll be able to have a good idea of what milestones you need to achieve in order to get ready for the next step in your plan. These include planning when you'll be writing your licensing exams, such as the MCCQE1 and the NAC OSCE. Now, medical knowledge is the same the world over. When you plan on writing one exam, such as the MCCQE1, plan to write other country licensing exams as well. For example, my first option of where I wanted to work was Canada, and my backup plans were to train in America and Australia. So I wrote the MCCQE1 and USMLE Step 2 CK around the same time. Both of these exams essentially tested the same content, so I only had to study once to write two exams. The second point is to have a general idea of what specialty you want to pursue and get exposed to it early in medical school so that you can rule it in or out. If you're able to shadow doctors in various specialties and talk to them about the realities of the medical specialty, you can get a better idea of what specialty is right for you. Talk to practicing doctors about what their lifestyle is like, how many hours per week they work, their stress levels, salaries, and employment prospects. All these are important considerations to look at when deciding what area of medicine you want to work in. Early in medical school, I had the chance to shadow my cousin who's an anesthesiologist working in Melbourne. I also shadowed a few surgeons to see what surgery would be like, and early on, I sort of ruled out surgery as an option that was not really for me. Once I decided I was going to focus on critical care specialties like anesthesiology and intensive care, then it was easier for me to focus all my energy to gain experience in these fields and set myself up as an ideal candidate for an anesthesiology residency. The next thing to do is get involved in a research project and try and get your results published. Getting involved in a research project will give you the chance to explore research and see whether this may be something you want to involve yourself in the future during your medical career. While in medical school, you'll come across many physicians who conduct research projects. You should ask them if you can get involved in their project by helping them gather data, analyze data, or write up parts of their manuscript. This will get your name on a publication and also give you the opportunity to build and foster relationships with senior physicians who will be able to mentor you as well as give you letters of recommendation. If you aren't able to get involved in a research project, keep your eyes open for an interesting or unique case that you come across in your clerkship rotations. You may be able to publish this case as a case report. Now keep in mind, case reports don't have as much impact on your resume as full research projects, but they still look great on your CV. In my final year of medical school, while I was on an anesthesia rotation, I got myself involved in a research project looking at the benefits of the fascia iliaca nerve block for acute pain management of hip fractures. It ended up being a lot of work but we had the results published in the British Journal of Anesthesia and I got to travel to the World Congress of Anesthesia in Argentina to present our results. This made a huge impact on my residency applications. Next, let's talk about licensing exams. Now, I cannot stress enough on how important it is to do well on your MCC examinations. Although many believe just passing these exams is enough, Many residency programs now want you to disclose your scores uh, as part of your application. These results will be used to help rank you um, 
among candidates for interview spots. When I applied, I already wrote my MCCEE, which is now a phased out examination, and my MCCQE1. I made sure I studied extremely hard for these exams using resources such as the Canada Q Bank. My MCCEE score was in the 99th percentile, and my MCCQE1 score was in the 92nd percentile. This is one of the only objective measures residency programs have to differentiate candidates applying from various parts of the world. You want to make sure you do as well as you can on these exams to be a competitive applicant. This brings me to my fifth point, which is completing electives in Canada. Plan early to complete some elective rotations in Canadian hospitals. This will allow you to see how medical practice works in Canada. You'll also be able to showcase yourself to potential residency program directors, and most importantly, you'll be able to make contacts with Canadian physicians who would be great mentors and provide letters of reference for your applications. Electives in Canada are very competitive, so make sure you apply early and get it so that you have the best chance of securing at least one spot. I did electives in neurosurgery, anesthesia, and family medicine. I worked really hard on all of these electives and made sure to keep in touch with my supervisors. My supervisors from an my anesthesia elective as well as my family elective, family medicine elective, eventually provided me with strong letters of recommendation for my CARMS application. This leads me to my next point, which is letters of reference. When you apply for a Canadian residency program, you'll need a minimum of three reference letters prepared by senior physicians in the specialty of your choice. Ideally, you want to choose senior physicians who have university affiliations or appointments. They should know you fairly well and, and can comment on your interpersonal skills in a clinical environment, as well as understand your aptitude for that specific specialty. Now, make sure at least one of these references is from a physician that is currently practicing in Canada. This is extremely important because this reference can compare you to your Canadian counterparts and give an objective measure of how good you are as a candidate. Next, let's talk about your CV or resume. Your CV is going to be the first impression you make on the selection committee. Your CV should highlight a few things, your education, work experience, volunteer experience, and research experience. Education experience should include all your degrees as well as your medical school rotations and, and electives that you've completed. Work experience should include professional work you've had before, during, and after medical school. For example, on my CV, I highlighted my first job as an engineer in Canada before starting medical school, as well as my internship and house officer jobs I had after graduating medical school. Volunteer experience should include any committees or student organizations you were involved with during medical school, and any work you did to give back to the local community hospital or, or the local community in general. Research experience should highlight the topic of your research project, at what capacity you were involved in the project, and if it was published, you need to include the exact title of the publication, when and where it was published. Now you've gone through everything in medical school, you've done all of the things that I've suggested and you've done more and you've worked really hard and your application has been successful and you've landed a couple of residency interviews. Once you get to the interview stage, congratulations and give yourself a pat on the back because you've, become, you've come one step closer to achieving your goal. It means you have now met the minimum requirements for a program. At the interview stage, you are essentially on a level playing field with all the other candidates who've made it this far. This in itself is a huge accomplishment and it's something to be proud of. But your work isn't over yet. First, I can't stress how important it is to take interviews seriously. You have to prepare for interviews just like you would prepare for any exam. Try and attend an interview prep course if you can. The interview is very unlikely to be about medical knowledge. Most residency interviews are about seeing if your personality matches the work culture in a particular hospital or university. Are you going to be a person that these people will be able to count on and work with for the next five years? Are you a team player? Will you work hard? 
At the interview, try and be yourself and down to earth. You have to find a good balance between selling yourself short and being overconfident and acting like a know-it-all. This is where interview preparation and going for an interview prep course will be key. If you'd like to see an, a video more about interview preparation and interview techniques, please leave a comment below and I'll see if I can put one together. Now, after you finish the interview, ensure that you thank all the interviewers personally at the interview. And if you're able to get the program director's email address, write a short thank you note to them on the same day, highlighting that you appreciate the fact that they've invited you for this interview. Now you've done all that you can do. The hard part now is waiting for the CARMS match day to arrive. Now, given how competitive matching into a Canadian residency program is, sometime even with the best application, you may not be able to match into a program. The key is to stay focused and have a plan A, B, and C with respect to where you'd be happy to live and work. For example, my choices included Canada, Australia, and America. Now, medicine involves investing a large portion of your life and a significant important amount of your money. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket without having a safety net. Now, by having multiple options, you have a net to fall back on if your plan A doesn't go quite as planned. By having backup plans, you'll also put less pressure on yourself if by chance plan A, plan A does not work out well. Ironically, this in fact lets you perform better when working towards plan A. For example, when I interviewed for my residency spots in Canada, I felt I actually performed better and felt less pressured in the interview because I still had options to go back and train in Australia and America. Now, a factor that may impact even the best application is the time since graduation. Now, perhaps one of the most thoroughly discussed and well-established red flags within a candidate's residency application is having an extended time since graduation or year of graduation gap. Now, this refers to the amount of time that has passed since the residency candidate graduated from medical school. Ideally, you want to try and minimize this to as short a time as possible. Now, the best case scenario is you want to apply for residency in Canada during your final year of medical school. Most foreign medical schools aren't designed to send graduates to Canada, so there isn't a dedicated time available to study for your MCCQE1 and the NAC OSCE. This is where careful planning comes into play. Some of my friends who matched right away from foreign medical schools used their summer breaks to study for these exams and got them out of the way as early as possible. Now, for me, I wasn't as organized during medical school, so I wrote my exams after graduation. My first year out of medical school was an internship, and my second year was spent as a house officer specializing in critical care rotations. I used this time to write the MCCQE1 complete a research project, and publish my results. I also use this time to work hard and acquire professional references for, from supervisors, which would eventually be a part of my CARMS application. I ended up applying to CARMS at the end of my second year out of medical school. Residency programs want candidates who have recent clinical experience so your chance of matching goes down exponentially if your year of graduation gap increases. So what happens if your year of graduation gap is more than five years? In this scenario, try and compensate for this by signing up for a few observerships in Canada so you can get at least some clinical exposure before submitting your application. Again, this is not the ideal situation, but it's better than no clinical experience at all. My final thoughts is use your unfair advantage. Throughout your medical school journey, talk to as many people as you can. Make contacts and keep in touch with them and make sure that you involve them in the process of your medical school journey. All of your professors, mentors, teaching assistants want to see you succeed. Keep in touch with them and involve them to help you get competitive electives, help you get published, give you insights about residency programs and the interview process. Use all your achievements to show off how focused and driven an individual you are. I hope this video has been useful. 
These were just some of the strategies I used when applying for a residency program in Canada. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like this video and share this video with colleagues that may be in the same position you are in terms of applying or wanting to apply to a residency position in Canada. Good luck with your applications and I hope to see you guys again soon.